as we go into uncharted territory, we can be strong and courageous, knowing that when we take steps of faith toward what God has told us to do, He will take care of us, He will go before us, and He will never fail us. Well, welcome to Grace. I'm Pastor Chris. I'm one of the pastors here on staff, and I'm so glad you're here today. I'm mean, so excited about what God is doing here at Grace. Uh, and last week, we kicked off a new series uh, called Uncharted, and we said, man, this is more than just a series. This is an uncharted faith journey, and, and we're asking you to join us on this journey. The, the, the primary goal of the Uncharted Initiative is 100% engagement. We want everyone to be fully engaged during the entirety of this series. And, and if you're new to Grace, I, I think it's such a great time to be here. Uh, it's an exciting time to be here. And our hope is that you'll join us in this journey and you'll get to see God grow your faith. Now, uh, to help with this engagement, one of the things that we, we gave out last week that our team put together is uh, Uncharted Guidebooks, all right? If you didn't get one last week, maybe you're gone because a sick kid, you're out of town, you didn't feel well, whatever, it doesn't matter. We want you to have a book. So our, our ushers are coming through the aisles right now. Um, go ahead and raise your hand, get their attention, get a book. We, we want you to have a book because fully enge full engagement is what we're looking for. This also is one of those deals of you can't share a book, all right? You, everybody needs to get books. So get a book. Uh, and when you get that book, go ahead and turn to pay the open page and the, the, the front page. Put your name on it because they all look the same. That way we know whose it is if you happen to misplace it. The other thing you'll find out and find in there is a commitment card. We're going to talk more about that later in the service today. But we want everyone to have one because our goal, once again, is that everybody would be fully engaged because uh, we're so excited about what God wants to do in and through this series. Now, um, once you get your book, go ahead and turn to page 19 to today's message notes or place to take notes today. And let's pray and ask God to guide us in our time together. God, thank you for today. And Holy Spirit, I ask that you would move in this place, that you'd speak through me that you'd speak to our hearts and you'd give us the boldness and courage to do whatever you tell us to do. Pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. When high school, I worked at a camp uh, that had a rock wall and, and a repelling wall and a zip line and, and a high ropes challenge course where, where people would try to go from tree to tree on wires and obstacles and right. And, and what, what we do is we'd hook everybody up with, with a, a harness like this one, right? And we'd have a bunch of ropes like this one right here. And we'd get people clipped in. And, and here's the thing. When we were doing all this, we'd get them all secure and, and strapped up tight. Everybody was pretty okay, right? We'd tell them, hey, this, this thing's going to hold you. It's going to be great. Rope, is, it, it can hold you. It's, it's totally safe. And everybody was okay until they weren't, right? Because the minute they start climbing that tree or, or that pole or whatever it was, that, that wall, and they get just out of what feels safe. All of a sudden, all their knowledge about their harness and their rope that's supposed to hold them goes out the window because suddenly fear kicks in. You know, what's interesting is that we can, we can have this idea and this belief that we can trust God, but the minute our trust begins to be challenged or tested, our struggle begins. Today, what I want us to see is that God prepares us for his promise by testing our trust. He prepares us for, for the promise, for what he wants to do in your life, what he wants to do through your life. He prepares us for it through testing our trust. Last week, we started by looking at the life of Abraham, who's one of the most significant men in human history. That's what we've looked at, or we talked about last week, but he's also a significant figure to our faith. He's often called the father of our faith. And what we learned from Abraham last week is that, that if we're going to experience God's best, what he wants for us, his promise for us, we've got to be willing to do what Abraham do, did. We have to leave the old, leave the old way of thinking, leave the old way of living, leave the old behind and go wherever God leads us. Be willing to go into uncharted territory and to bless others along the way. We asked ourselves this question, how has God blessed me so that I can bless others along the way? Now, here's the thing. In this series, I want you to be here for each week. If you missed last week, go watch online. If you haven't seen it, I'm just telling you, I want you to be fully engaged each week because I believe this will be a defining moment in the life of our church as we follow God in faith and we ask him 
to give us greater faith for a greater future. And I think what God will do is there's a couple things, a couple ways God will change our church. Number one, he will increase our impact. It'll help us extend our reach as a church to as we make more room for those who aren't here yet, those who are moving to our area. We exist to inspire and equip people to know and follow Jesus. And we want to continue doing that. Last week we said that 1,392 people have put their faith or have gone public with their faith through baptism here at Grace since it began. And we're so excited about that. It's amazing. Yeah, we should celebrate that. That's what God has done. Well, we don't believe he's finished. And matter of fact, if you put your faith in Jesus at some point and you haven't taken the next step of going public with your faith through baptism, that's your next step. And we're gonna be baptizing next week and we'd love for you to be a part of that. If that's you, you have questions or you wanna sign up, you can do that through the QR code or stop by the hub. Why? Because we wanna help you take your next step in your faith journey. We love celebrating what God has done and what God is doing. And we'd love to celebrate that with you. But we also believe that he's not finished. He's done amazing things along the way, but we believe he's still working, he's still moving, and the best is yet to come. I have a friend who always says, there's still, uh, there's still much to be done for his kingdom. And I believe God is at work. And through this uncharted initiative, I believe God wants to increase our impact. The second thing I believe God will do through this initiative is that he will grow our faith as we engage. He'll grow our faith as a church, but, but he'll grow our faith individually as we begin to ask God, God, how do you want to grow my faith? How do you want to, to lead me? Where do you want to lead me in such a way that, that takes me into uncharted territory? And I see you do things in me and through me that I never could have done on my own. I believe God wants to grow our church in that way. And this is one of those series that it's kind of like a, a realignment for a car. If you've ever driven a car that was out of alignment, what happens is, is it pulls to one ditch or the other, right? And I think sometimes when our hearts get out of line with God, we begin to get pulled to the, the ditch of selfishness or the ditch, the, the ditch of self-reliance. And so this is one of those series where we're able to step back and stop and let the Holy Spirit realign our hearts with God and his mission. See, it's, it's this kind of series that I believe God would change our life and become a defining moment in our lives. And I believe that's what God wants to do with this series as we look at the life of Abraham. Abraham followed God in faith into uncharted territory. It changed his life. It changed the trajectory of his family. And it led to a generational blessing that you and I get to experience as followers of Jesus. I believe God wants to lead us down the same path of faith that Abraham walked, the path that led him to make a difference that lasted for eternity. And I think he wants to do the same with you and he wants to do the same with me. But we have to learn to trust God along the way. And Abraham, he had to learn to trust God along the way. And actually, when we pick up in his story early on, we see that Abraham has some major trust issues, okay? In Genesis chapter 12, we looked at it last week that we saw where God said, hey, Abraham, here's the deal. I'm, gonna, I'm making this promise to you. I'm gonna make your name famous. I'm gonna make you into this, your family into this great nation. And I'm gonna bless the world through you. Not only that, I'm gonna bless those who curse you. I mean, I'm gonna curse those who curse you and I'm gonna bless those who bless you. In other words, saying, I've got you. I'm going to protect you. I'm going to take care of you. And just seven verses later, this famine hits, and it's so bad that he has to go to Egypt to get food. And as it goes, he tells his wife, Sarah, hey, Sarah, when we go, you've got to tell everybody you're my sister, because if they think you're my wife, they're going to kill me to get you. But, but listen, if you tell everybody you're my sister, they'll start bringing us some good stuff. We'll get rich. It'll be amazing. But they didn't count on is Pharaoh, the ruler of the land, taking Sarah for himself. And that's where everything went sideways. See, see Aram lacked the trust of what God promised him, that, that God would protect him, that God would take care of him. And luckily, God rescued him from himself, but his lack of trust put his wife and himself in a bad situation. But that's not the only time he failed to trust. That, that, that wasn't an isolated event. In Genesis 16, we saw where Sarah and, and Abraham uh, begin to get worried that God's not going to come through on his promise. So they take matters into their own hands. And Sarah goes, hey, go sleep with Hagar, our servant. And, and if she bears a son, she has a son, then that can be our descendant. And it worked, but it didn't work out. Because the minute Hagar got pregnant, 
Sarah was bitter. She was de- jealous. She was angry. I mean, come on, guys. We know that wouldn't work for the marriage, right? That doesn't work out. And so this this cat fight ensued. And so the great spineless wonder of a leader that he was says, you girls go work that out. He failed again. Genesis chapter 17, where God reaffirms his promise to Abraham. This time when when he says that, hey, I'm going to give you a son, he laughed. The father of our faith essentially mocked God to his face. And then in Genesis chapter 20, they come up against this king that they're scared of again. And what does Abraham do? He tells Sarah, hey, I need you to tell everybody that you're my sister. (laughs) Same mistake, different day. He didn't learn from his mistakes. Now, I want you to see this, that the the father of our faith, Abraham, the significant character in the story of Jesus, had some major faith failures because he struggled to trust God. My dad said growing up that being smart is learning from your mistakes. Being wise is learning from others' mistakes. So this morning, I want us to get wise by learning from Abraham's mistakes. I think there's four things that we can learn from him. The first one is this, that trust grows through testing. Trust grows through testing. This climbing rope right here, that we, that they say that, that it will hold 5,672 pounds. How in the world do they know that? Because they tested it, right? It's been tested. They know what it can handle. Now, here's the thing. What if they brought me a new rope? And maybe, maybe you or me, and, and we're, we're getting ready to climb. And they brought you a new rope, and they said, hey, this is brand new. Stay the art. New technology. It hasn't been tested yet, but we're pretty sure, pretty confident. It can hold between 15 and 5,000 pounds. But we're pretty sure it'll hold you. Nobody's going to trust that. Why? because it hasn't been tested. See, see, what we can learn is that a faith that hasn't been tested can't be trusted. See, see the minute that Abraham begins to follow God, it, the, the test begins. He sends him to Egypt to get food where he knew that he would be scared, where he knew his trust would be tested. Why is he testing his trust? Why is he testing his faith? Because faith grows through testing. When, God used James, who's Jesus' half-brother, to explain it this way in James chapter 1. He said, Dear brothers and sisters, when troubles of any kind come your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. That's, really? That's not the reaction anybody has when they have trouble in life. He says, but here's why. For you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. Your your ability to trust God grows. So let it grow for when your endurance is fully developed, when you've learned to fully trust God, you'll be perfect and complete, needing nothing. See, God's goal of testing is to grow our faith because he knows that when our faith grows, we're able to experience the fullness of who God made us to be and what he wants to do in you. And through you, trust grows through testing. Second thing we see is that every test involves tension. See, every test involves tension. If I were to take this rope and and I I go ahead and and, and I I hook on, this is, and and I I get latched in and then I I start going everywhere like this. All right. Hey, guys, I've got this. Look, look how much I trust this rope. I don't go anywhere without it. Can you see my trust? I trust it so much. It's always connected. It's always there. Every time, you know, if I ever need it, it's right there, right? I haven't trusted this rope yet, have I? But isn't this the way we follow Jesus? We want to be connected. We want to be close. But we never want to have to follow in a way where we have to actually trust God to do anything. We We want to follow God in a way that doesn't require faith. We just want to keep it close. We just want to have them with us. Like, 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 hey, guys, everybody, look at my faith. It's so great. And yet we've never even had to trust God. We've never taken a step that caused us to trust God. So for Abraham, God promised him a son. But then he made him wait. He could have given him a son right away, but he didn't. Which this is significant because he was 75 years old when he made this promise to him. And I think we can all agree he was a little bit past his prime at that point. Right? And then God made him wait. Why did he make him wait? He made him wait to grow 
his trust, to create some tension where he had to wait on God. It, this was something out of Abraham's control. There's nothing he can manipulate, nothing he can manufacture. It, it would require him to fully, completely depend on God. And it was in the tension that his trust began growing. Now, I'm sure you can relate to that. I know I can. Where I prayed for something, hoped for something, waited for something, and, and it felt like I waited for so long, I started to wonder, all right, God, did I hear you wrong? Is this even going to happen? Can I really even trust you? And maybe that's where you are right now. And you're wondering if God's ever going to come through. I want you to know, often the path to God's promise isn't pleasant. Because so often, God will lead you into the valley so that, he, so that you will learn that he will bring you through. That he'll lead you into the storm to, to teach you that he is able and that he is with you every step of the way. He will lead you into uncharted territory to teach you to trust. Because here, here's the reality of it. Trust grows through testing because the test teaches us to trust. Think about that. Our trust grows through testing because it is the test itself that teaches us that we can trust God. During this uncharted initiative, God's gonna call you, I believe, to, to trust him in ways with generosity in ways you never imagined. And, and, and that may create an internal struggle with you. And, and the reason why I, I think that happens is, is something I heard a pastor say, that when we think generosity, we think dollars and cents. But when God thinks generosity, he thinks trust and control. Let me say that again, that, that when we think generosity, we think dollars and cents, yet when God thinks generosity, he thinks trust and control because he doesn't want your money. He doesn't need it. It's his anyway. God wants your heart. He wants your trust. He wants you to trust him for provision and protection and security and satisfaction, not money. He knows that where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. And he wants your hearts. Listen, God will call us to follow him in generosity in ways that may scare us. But there are ways that makes us learn to trust him. Look, I, I, could, I could even snap into this rope. And I could be like, hey, guys, look how much I trust God. Look at this. I want y'all to watch this. Boom. Y'all see that trust? That was amazing. Yeah, no, how about this one? Watch this. Watch this. I can step down from this one. Oh, y'all see that? Now, here's what I know. Nobody's going, man, that was amazing trust. Will you do it again? Because I trusted that rope as far as I could control. I, I didn't need the rope to make that step. See, when it, when it comes to following God... Faith doesn't play it safe. Faith doesn't play it safe. In Hebrews eleven six, 6, we see where God tells us that without faith, it is impossible to please God. You know what that tells me? Is that, that it's impossible to give in such a way. The only kind of generosity that, that pleases God is the kind that requires faith. And you know what's incredible is that we see that Abraham finally gets this in Genesis chapter 22 when he offers his only son, the one he'd waited for over 20 years for. He offers the life as his only son. We're going to look at this more later in one of the, the, the next few weeks. But how did he get to a place that he was willing to trust God that way? It was through the testing. Because testing grows our trust. And every test involves tension. I think the third thing that we can see as we look at his, his life is that we can trust God because God is trustworthy. It's not about us. It's about God. God is trustworthy. We can trust God because he is trustworthy. See, God shows up again in Genesis chapter 15 to bless Abram. And basically, Abram goes, uh, what good is that, God? You haven't even given me a son. Like a servant is going to be the heir. Like my family ends with me. What good is that blessing? And I want you to see how God responded in verse four. He says, no, your servant will not be your heir for you will have a son of your own who will be your heir. Then the Lord took Abram outside and said to him, look into the sky and count the stars if you can. I love that part. <laughs> if you can. I mean, it's easy for me, but maybe, maybe you can try. That's how many descendants you will have. 
And then it says this, and Abram believed the Lord, and the Lord counted him as righteous because of his faith. Do you see that? He was made right with God because of his faith, that that he, he had a right relationship with God because of his faith. People have asked me before, how did the people in the Old Testament, how were they saved? The same way as the New Testament, through faith. See, the people in the Old Testament believed and had faith that God would send the Messiah to come and be the Savior of the world. We in the New Testament are able to look back and believe that God has sent the Messiah, that is Jesus, to come and and be the Savior of the world. It's through faith in Jesus Christ that we have a right standing with God. It's not by works. Nobody can be good enough. It's by putting our faith in Jesus and trusting him with our lives that we earn a right standing, that we are given a right standing with God. So it says Abram believed, and and it's like, man, way to go, Abram. You finally did it. But then Abram asked a very honest question. Look at it with me. He says, but Abram replied, O sovereign Lord, how can I be sure that I will actually possess it? He says, how how can I know that you're really going to do this? And I feel like even though it seems as if Abram's doubting, I feel like we can empathize with this question. It's been over 20 years since the first promise. I mean, I feel like I would have the same question. Like, God, how do I know this isn't false hope? And I want you to see that God wasn't angry. Instead, God answered his question by making a covenant. A covenant was far greater than a, 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 a contract or agreement. It was a binding commitment that could only be terminated in death. So he tells Abraham, I want to, I want to make this covenant with you. Go get uh, a cow, a goat, a ram, a turtle dove, and a pigeon. I want you to cut them in half, create kind of a walkway between them where the blood will pull and create kind of a river. And what would happen when they'd make this covenant is the person making the covenant would walk through the blood. And as the blood splashed up on the hem of their robe, it was essentially saying, if I don't keep up my end of the deal, Let this happen to me, which seems incredibly strange in today's culture, but it might help some people keep their commitments better. I'm just saying, right? It was very normal back then. It was very normal, but this covenant was different than any other covenant because God was the one who passed through, not Abraham. See, in those days, the servant would be the one who would pass through the middle, not the king, because it was assumed that the king would keep his word. This was the only covenant in recorded history where the king is the one who passed through and the servant didn't, which which the meaning of this is very clear, that if God doesn't keep his side of the deal, he will pay with blood. Well, God always, he's never failed. He always keeps his side. He always keeps his word. He's never lied. He's never failed. But but, But also what he's saying here is that if Abraham fails, God will also pay with blood. He made himself responsible for both sides, which is a clear picture of why Jesus came. Jesus died on the cross because we failed, because we sinned. He paid for our failure with his blood by dying to pay the penalty of our sins so that anyone who put their faith in him could be saved. See, in the cross, we see God's commitment to us. Not only to keep his end of the deal, but but that he will make up for where we mess up. And I want you to know this, no matter who you are or how you've stumbled, how you feel like you've failed, you can get, get up and, and keep going in faith because of God's commitment to you. God is still faithful even when we fail. Abram, the father of our faith, failed many times. He even failed the same way more than once. And he probably felt like it was all over. But each time God said to him, get up, I still have a plan. And maybe you've messed up. You feel like you've gone too far. You feel like there's no way God could use you. I believe God is saying to you this morning, get up, keep going. I still have a plan for you. You can have faith in God's faithfulness because he has proven that he is faithful through Jesus Christ. So get up and trust the God who's proven that he is trustworthy. Because listen, the more you learn to trust God, the more you'll get to to tell the story of how God is trustworthy. Kind of like Chris and Jenny's story. Um, In 
God has truly, oh, for I sure. mean, one, he gave me him and anything he, we have, anybody has. And so that was, that was hard for me. And I know years ago, the Lord spoke to me and, you know, just spoke to my heart and told me I was greedy, um, not only with money, but with my things, with my time, with my resources, you know, all these um, different things. And I just, mm. how he kind of loved me through that and just kind of opened up my eyes to um, that he's given me all of these things that his resources are to the ends of the earth. Like they they never run out. And if we are supposed to have it, then if there's someone that needs it, then we were given that, you know, money, resource, whatever it was in order to give to them. Um, and he's given us a few of those people. Right. He's given us a few of those opportunities to um, help take care of his people. His We've children. also seen money come in the mail that yeah, I mean, we've had times Why? where it was, yeah, we were struggling and mm -hmm. um, yeah, it, it's, he's come through every single time. And I mean, to this day, I'll still be like, oh, this is how much we have in savings or this is how much we have. And he's like, I don't care. It's there. And I'm like, I know, I know, you know, so I'm still a work in progress. <laughs> True story. <laughs> yeah, I'm still a work in progress, uh, but I'm, it's getting better. And I can see the fruits of, you know, being able to, um, give and we do we we cheerfully and, give mm -hmm. it's an automatic thing we don't even think about it we've recently discussed okay you know we need to step outside of our comfort zone because now we're comfortable in what we're giving we need to step it up and we need to you know take that step of faith and i think that you know it's just do more with less yep exactly mm -hmm. yeah to me it's just you know falling into that trusting god and and knowing that he keeps his promises whether it's with you know a job, giving, mm -hmm. you know, money, resources, whatever it may be. Kids have a lot of them. Oh, you do. So, you know, it's like we got to fall into that trust and, and know that he's got us regardless. We've learned in the past by not praying about it, not you yes, know, going to God and saying, Horrible mistakes. Okay, is this what we should do? You know, like close those doors or keep them open. Um, let it be known, you know, like give us a sign, like literally give mm -hmm. us a sign that this is where we're supposed to go. Um, and it's, we haven't done that in the past and it hasn't, you know, been very yep. good financial decisions. You know, I keep telling him like, we've got to be good stewards with what we have mm -hmm. um, and stuff. And so just learning that stewardship and where does God really want us to put those extra resources. And we've, you know, seen God come through. Um, I, I have um, a medical issue where I need um, medication. And after we had our son, mm. I, for probably months, obviously through my whole pregnancy, I didn't have this medication. Um, and then I uh, came to the point where I needed this medication, literally opened up my refrigerator and there was one shot that had fallen in the back. It, I, we'd been in the refrigerator for months upon mm. months never saw it and boom it was there and it was like god had to have put it there like it mean? was not there before um you know so like little things like that where it's like okay god knew that need and it just it it was there um and stuff and so i i go back to those moments a lot and you know even when i'm struggling and my anxiety you know gets a little carried away and stuff it's like okay jenny you've He's got you, you mm -hmm. know, you're in, you're in control of my mind and I have to uh, make sure I go to his word because what he says is true and yeah. I can trust him. Listen, when we trust God, we'll discover that he's trustworthy. And then when we do, what will happen is God will turn our trust into a testimony. See, when we trust God, God turns our trust into a testimony. Remember I told you that God changed Abram's name to Abraham. I want us to look at that interaction in Genesis chapter 17. He says, this is my covenant with you. I will make you the father of a multitude of nations. What's more, I'm changing your name. It will no longer be Abram. Instead, you'll be called Abraham for you will be the father of many nations. God goes, listen, you believed I'm giving you a new name. But once your name was Abram, which meant father, now your name is going to be Abraham, which means father of many, father of many nations. So in essence, what happened, he said, hey, your name was, was once Papa. Now it's Big Papa. And he loved it when they called him Big Papa. <laughs> Listen, 
Listen, when you, I got tickled myself. All right. When you learn to trust Jesus to save you and to guide you, when you put your faith in him, he gives you a new name. He calls you son. He calls you daughter. And you discover your God-given identity the more you learn to trust him. Abram trusted God. God gave him a new name that you're going to be father of many nations. And God gave him a son named Isaac. Isaac had two sons, Jacob and Esau. Jacob's name later got changed to Israel. Israel had 12 sons who became the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. And it's through the nation of Israel that Jesus came. And we are sitting here today sharing in the blessing of God's promise to Abraham because Abraham believed. He trusted God and God delivered on his promise. God turned his trust into a testimony, one that we get to share in today. So the question that we should ask ourselves, who will point to you from eternity and say, because they trusted God boldly and courageously, I got to experience God's blessing for myself. Because God used their generosity to support the mission of the church where I got to experience Jesus for myself. That's what this Uncharted Initiative is all about. That's what this series is all about. It's about learning to trust God in ways we never have before, to let him grow our faith and use our faith to make the kind of impact that changes the eternity for those who God put us here to reach. See this commitment card that came in your guide? This is meant to be a, a discipleship tool. Last week, I asked you just to put it in a place where you'd see it daily and you begin to pray, God, what do you want to do in my life? How do you want to grow my faith? And I've asked you to pray over it. And as you pray over it, I believe God will invite you to trust him in ways that you never have before in your generosity. And many of you, you already know what God has said to you, maybe come to a vision night. You know what you're supposed to do. And tonight is Advanced Commitment Night. And I'm so excited about it. I'm inviting you. I want you to come tonight and to lead the way with me in doing what God has asked us to do and take a step of faith in trusting God and what he's asked us to do and lead the way. It's gonna be an amazing night. But the question really we all need to wrestle with is will we trust God in ways that he tells us? Or will we give in to trusting our own logic and reason? Let me encourage you in this. Don't talk yourself out of what God is inviting you into. It's going to be amazing because God wants to grow your faith. He wants to do something in you so that he can do something through you, something that you could never do on your own. Because here's the thing, trust, it's not found in just keeping God close. It's not found in just saying, man, look, look at what I can do. As long as I'm clipped in, I'm fine. It's about saying, God, I'll follow. If you tell me to keep going, I'll keep going. If you tell me to climb, I'll keep climbing. I'm not going to stop till you tell me to stop. And I'll go until it even scares me. When I get a little bit nervous, I'll keep going. When you ask me to step off and trust you, I'll step off and trust you even in ways that I can't control and I can't guarantee on my own. Now, here's what I want you to know. I used to do this a lot, and when I first did it, it was really nerve-wracking. But the more I did it, the easier it was. And the same is true when you learn to trust God. When he first started, it might be nerve-wracking. But the more you learn to trust God, the more you'll discover that he is trustworthy. God prepares us for his promise by testing our trust. And the question is, will you trust God beyond what you can control? Will you do whatever God is asking you to do? Nothing more, nothing less. Today, if you've never put your faith in Jesus, you never trusted him to, to save you. You can do that. And I believe God is asking you to, to take that step today. To just tell him, God, I know I've sinned. 
We've all sinned. No one's worse than anyone else. We all sin and are in need of the Savior. And we believe that Jesus died for us and he rose from the grave. If today you'd say, man, I want to put my faith in him. Tired of living life my way, I need God to come into my life to save me and through the power of his Holy Spirit to change my life from the inside out and help me follow him. And if today that's the decision you need to make, you can make it right there. I'm gonna lead you in a prayer in just a second, but I want you to know, it's the beginning of a journey. It's not a destination. It's the beginning of the greatest journey you could ever imagine. And we'd love to help walk alongside you in that journey. So what I'd love for you to do is if that's the decision you're making today, will you let someone know one of our prayer partners or stop by the hub or let us know through the QR code because we wanna walk alongside you. We wanna help you take your next step in your journey. But today as we close, I wanna give an opportunity just to pray and mark that decision in your life. This prayer doesn't save you. It's just a way of marking that decision. So as we close, will you bow your heads and close your eyes? And if today you'd say, I need to put my faith in Jesus. I need to trust him with my life. Tell him something like this. God, I know that I've sinned and I need you to save me. I believe you died on the cross, that you rose from the dead. Today, I put my trust in you. I ask you to save me. I ask you to change me. Through the power of your Holy Spirit, ask you to lead me as I follow you. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for saving me. God, my prayer is that for all of us who've come to a place where we said yes to you and we followed you in faith to save us, God, that you would give us the boldness and courage to continue to follow you in faith and trust you in ways that we've never trusted you before. And we'd be willing to do whatever it is you ask us to do. I pray this in Jesus' name.